Alexi asked me a question about mixed models, because he's been reading the SAS manual or the R manual in the free time when he's... I just do your models course about mixed models. Okay. So Alexi asked me about what about mixed models? Well, this guy Glazer, many years ago, suggested that just rescaling by the size of the firm or the size of the state wasn't very interesting. It might be the case that we could model the error variance in a more substantive way. And so Glazer suggested that there might be another variable that we think is driving the heteroscedasticity. And that the error variance is a function of that other variable, z. So let's first estimate the model as though we don't have heteroscedasticity, and we'll save all the residuals. And then we'll use those residuals, those least squared residuals, as the dependent variable, either take their absolute value or square them. And we'll construct one model or the other, where on the right-hand side we have this variable that we'll call z, which we think is determinative of the heteroscedasticity. So once we have that relationship, we then tell R or SAS or whatever we're using that we want to run a mixed model. And we specify that this is what's doing the mixing. Think a food processor or a blender. Okay, so that's what's doing the blending of the food processor. And so when we specify that as the, the mixed part of the model, SAS or R or SPSS, whatever you're using, says, oh, what we need to do is fit this relationship to the least squares residuals that we calculated the first time through. We're going to construct a set of fitted EI squares take their square root, invert them, and use them as the weights for our eventual regression. Okay, so that, in effect, suppose we were using this one. In effect, omega inverse then turns out to be um, gamma zero hat plus gamma hat And then way, and then zeros on the off diagonal, and then way down in the last row, last column, we have gamma hat zero plus gamma hat one uh, times z n n to make sure that oh yeah, so that so that becomes omega our estimate of omega inverse. Fortunately, all of this is automated for us in whatever software we're using. It becomes a pretty simple job. So the software would say oh. Lacey told us, take the superscripts off, the powers off. Lacey told us that this is omega. And so the software says, if this is omega, then omega inverse, just invert the main diagonal terms. And if you want to do a mixed model, we're going to take, we're going to find that, and then we're going to compute uh, omega hat to the minus a half times x, and we're going to run the regression using x tilde. So there's a connection between what we've been talking about and what you did in, uh, if you took that class, that linear, linear models class. Yeah, with Lacey. The trouble with Glazer is that, well, nowadays it doesn't seem so important. In the old days, whenever you ran a regression, you end up getting some sprinted output. So you went through a lot of paper pretty fast exploring, doing the Glazer exploration. Uh, nowadays it doesn't matter because everything is electronic. Hard drive. 